What's up? I wanted to do a video about a project that I've had in mind for quite some time. I'm referring to this project as my historical capsule wardrobe. You might be familiar with capsule wardrobes. The concept is that you limit your entire wardrobe to a discrete number of items and you collect those items really thoughtfully so that they're all really easy to mix and match. I never really got into capsule wardrobes for my everyday clothing because I just really hate using the same outfit too many times. Please stop doing that. No. But at some point, I came up with this idea for a historical capsule wardrobe where I would make a bunch of pieces that were easy to mix and match into my everyday wear that would also act as the sort of handmade historical wardrobe that I really wanted. One day, probably a year ago, I sat down and I hand wrote a list of what, I, what items I thought I would need for this historical capsule wardrobe. Unfortunately, I lost the list. But luckily, the same day, I made a spreadsheet with examples of how I could mix and match all of those pieces. So I do still have that so I can rebuild my list from that spreadsheet. My original intent was to make everything in black and white or gray, just to make it easier to mix and match things. I intended to focus on wools and linens because I am on a campaign against polyester. I absolutely hate how it feels and I hate how it makes me all sweaty and sticky and I refuse to ever buy it ever again. Since I've been working from home for the last three or four months at this point, um, I did start making some of the pieces on my capsule wardrobe sort of dream list, but some of them are not black because I've been working off of just what's in my stash. So. My original list of what I thought I would need was two pair, at least two linen blouses, more would probably make a lot more sense, um, a trumpet style skirt, a split skirt, like a, a bicycle riding skirt from 1890s, early 1900s, two pairs of breeches, a pair of plus fours, layering pieces like a doublet, a frock coat, a couple of waistcoats, and that came out to about 11 pieces, not counting shoes and socks and stuff. Some of the stuff though, when I came up with that list, I did already have in progress. And those items that were already in progress were not black or white or gray. So I did already have um, a wool frock coat that was in progress that is actually green. And I did have a waistcoat to go with that a Lindsay Woolsey waistcoat that was navy. And I also last year started these brown breeches in linen. So those are not black, but because they were already in progress, I decided I should probably just absorb them into the capsule wardrobe so that I would have more pieces to start with. So then at the beginning of quarantine, I started going through my stash of fabric and patterns to see what I had, and I realized I had several yards of this plaid wool that would be perfect to make the split skirt that I was thinking of. Um, but unfortunately, that wool is very much brown and like some green and tan tones, so again, not black. However, I, I did in my stash have some black merino wool that I had gotten from a tailor shop that was closing. And I also had a pattern for 17th century men's slops that I was planning to make this year for an event that is now canceled, of course. Um, so I did end up making those 17th century slops that I'll probably end up integrating into the capsule historical wardrobe. Um, and those are black. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm starting to get these pieces made and I'm glad that I'm sort of responsibly using up the stuff that's in my stash instead of going out and buying new stuff. But I am starting to worry a little bit about the cohesiveness of this historic wardrobe and how much I'll be able to mix and match the pieces because of that. Right now, the biggest thing I'm still missing is blouses because they're intimidating to me to make. I have an 18th century men's shirt, but it's it's like so big and blousey and it has such a deep neck slit that for everyday wear, 
I just don't see myself wearing it that much. So I'm trying to settle on a blouse design that's sort of somewhere between modern and historical that wouldn't look too out of place with the historical clothing, but definitely doesn't have as many like buttons down the front because if there are tons of buttons down the front, I'm never gonna finish it. I, I hate buttonholes. 2020 has been the year of buttonholes and I swear to God, I started putting the buttons on these breeches, but if I have to look at one more buttonhole, I'm probably just never gonna work on buttonholes again. So those have to sit off to the side for a while and blouses have to have no buttonholes because I'll never finish them. I did start mocking up a tentative blouse pattern. I traced a blouse that I have in my closet. Um, it's just going to be kind of two rectangular pieces, darts in the front. I don't know if you can see those. Um, the sleeve, I am using a pattern from a vintage 1980s blouse that I picked up at a yard sale. I have to tweak it a little bit at least where the gathering goes. Um, so, and I think this needs to be a bit wider and blousier, but I think that's what I'll end up making at least one or two blouses out of. And the sleeve, I'm thinking I might do some that cut off here, but then I also might do some that have like bishop sleeves and go all the way down just because I love that look. But it needs more testing. And like I said, I'm still intimidated by blouses. So we'll see how that goes. I'm also realizing I have a sock issue. A lot of the pieces that I'm making are short and traditionally they would have been worn with either socks or hose on the lower leg. And I'm just wondering how many pairs of socks do I need? Do I want to get all cotton? Do I want to get all wool? Where do I want to buy these from? For the summer, that's probably going to be way too hot. Like part of my intent of using only linens and wools is that in the summer I can just wear linen straight through. But obviously then you don't want to put a thick sock on your leg if you're trying to stay cool. So I might just go without socks with these in the summer and just wear sandals. There's, there's a lot that I'm taking into consideration while also just like blindly going forward with making stuff that's not actually cohesive. Right now, I have maybe half the pieces that I was hoping to have or that I thought I would have, but most of them are not in the colors that I was originally gonna make them in. I have some black linen to make some blouses out of or maybe a skirt or maybe some breeches, I'm, I'm not sure yet. I do also have navy linen in a twill to make another pair of breeches, which would go with the waistcoat better, so at least there's some cohesion there. I'm, I'm still interested in making some Regency era waistcoats, but I'm not sure yet what kind of fabric I want to make those in. I don't know if anything in my stash would work for that or if I have to buy new fabric. With me integrating more pieces that were started before I conceived this capsule wardrobe project, I feel like it's starting to get a little uncohesive. And I have to find a way to bring it all kind of back together, but I'm hoping maybe once I finish off more of these and start mixing and matching them, and maybe once I make a few pieces that are my target color, um, maybe then it will start to cohere a bit better. That's what I have for now. That's where I hope this project is going. 
we'll see how well it works out. Hopefully at some point in the future, probably months from now, I'm not sure, I'll have an update and I will have more outfits that I can show you and more mix and match options. So yeah, that is the beginning of my historical capsule wardrobe. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is my like Viking inspired linen outfit that I made. It's just this big tunic thing. I've got these puffy pants. It's not part of the capsule wardrobe. It's just a thing that I wear sometimes because it's hot and it's linen. It's nice.